Hi, David. Hi, Abby. Your mustache is looking very dignified. You are as kind as ever. How are you? I feel like you're just a couple weeks away from just being able to curl the end if you really want to. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure Sven does that and pulls it off really well. So I, I think that is a Sven thing and, and not such a David thing. Um, <laughs> so that, that might be that might be that like bridge too far. <laughs> I am good. Good morning. Hey, what's up, Good morning. So, uh, the platform engineering doc, uh, I, I wonder if documents are not the easiest way for folks to like collab. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like we got to have something that's uh, multiplayer and <laughs> Google, I mean, Google Docs is like the Google Docs is the minimum bar for anything really. Yeah. Sorry if there's any Google people listening this after. That's not meant as an insult, but it's just like there's other tools, you know, like I've used Notion quite a bit. I like Notion, but like that's not that's far from the only tool. There's just different mm -hmm. ways people like to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think like maybe Google Docs is something in the middle because I, I tried like worse tools and better tools. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's like it's right there at that minimum bar. It's like there's yeah exactly there's much worse out there. <laughs> exactly, you can write and you can comment the stuff and it works. So I surprised to, uh, I am going to be recorded for posterity saying this. I did not fully appreciate Microsoft Word until I was uh, I know until I had to start <laughs> writing a ton of things and I was like oh I get it now I get it. Um, then it was like, okay, this like, there's a very robust set of review features, and there's like, there's, it's like, okay, I get it now, I get it now. The the moment when I realized I liked using Microsoft Word Online more than Google Docs, on, like for online stuff, I was like, I, I don't know if I should walk away from technology at this point, or like, because that happened while I was at Microsoft. I'm like, is it getting to me? Am I here? And it's just getting to me while I'm here at Microsoft. Um, nope, still agree with that. I, I will refrain from commenting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. We have uh, probably a minute before we just declare uh, quorum, I think. Yeah, I was really hoping Sven would get here because I know he was interested, but if he can't, then yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, do, my, I'll do my best. I just ran across something. Uh, I ran across a Quasm Cloud. Uh, yes, I, I saw that. Um, and so, yeah, no, that's a that's one thing we're trying. We're, that's a community effort from from someone who's been interested to try it out in the Wasm Cloud community. Um, uh, to be perfectly honest, like I don't know, we're gonna still it's it's there as an experiment on purpose. We've also though, like from the Cosmonic side, we've been doing a controller. For integrating with, with Kubernetes, and we might contribute an open source version of that back to Wasm Cloud. So cool. we'll have to talk to to um, the maintainer of that and just see like what we think we should do. Um, it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting conversation. Great. All right, uh, we have reached eleven oh five or in Eastern time. I'm sorry, that is five minutes after the hour and everybody else's time. Uh, Let's see, we are a, all right, hey, hi everybody, I'm David Justice. Uh, you are here at the Tag Runtime uh, WASM Working Group meeting. Uh, we are a CNCF uh, subproject, uh, and so we observe the CNCF Code of Conduct. Uh, please be nice to each other. Uh, also, please raise your hand to be recognized. Um, if conversation allows for it, uh, Perhaps uh, you can refrain, but uh, we start to talk over each other. Let's make sure we raise our hands to recognize each other. Um, thank you all and welcome. Uh, so today we have a relatively short agenda. Um, I want to give a uh, quick opening to anybody in the audience that would like to introduce themselves, say hello, maybe hey for the first time, uh, or a returning member that would like to say hello and yeah, maybe mention something that's on your mind.
All right. That's fine. Um, I am going to say, everybody, you get to one, two, three. Okay, we passed. All right. Nobody wanted to say hello. I'll say hello again. Uh, hi, Liam. Hello. I'll say hello. <laughs> oh, it's so great to have you here. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for being here. All right. So uh, if you would, uh, please consider leaving your name in the attendance. Um, I don't believe we have any PSAs to go over. Does anybody have any PSAs that they would like to bring up from the audience? Uh, please raise your hand I'll, if you do. I'll bring them up at the end. Uh, one at the end. Um, David, I, it's not like super important, but something I figure people would probably want to look at over the the lull, the holiday lull. Yeah, that's a very good point. So this is going to be the last meeting of the year for, for this working group. Um, so thank you all for, for attending and please don't show up on the 26th. Uh, enjoy some time away, perhaps touch some grass. I don't know. Enjoy family. Uh, let's see. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get into it. Today's agenda, we have goals, ideas, and structure for WASM plus platform white paper. Sven and Taylor. Uh, would you like the floor, gentlemen? Yes, thank you. I'm glad, Sven, you got here. I was really worried. I was going to have to do that alone for a second. Um, so um, I'm going to send in the chat right now the link to the document um, that was just, has just been kind of like a j dropping ideas in. There's absolutely no structure at this point. Um, and then also just a request. I normally try to help take notes, but since I'm talking, so if someone can take notes while we do this, that'd be great. Um, Anyway, so we have this document right here um, that I just that I just sent, and um, actually, I'll go ahead and share my screen with it. Just that the way we have it up. Um, just gotta find it. Okay, am I showing a doc now? Yeah, you are. <laughs> okay. That's indeed. Uh, that was harder than it should have been. Promise I technology people. Um, so the um, the ma the main thing we wanted to talk about here, like I said, are just kind of the I always like to do the who, what, when, where, why kind of kind of thing here. Um, I, if that's okay with you, Sven, we can just kind of talk through like audience and then what we want to talk through and like how how and when we want to do it and who's going to participate with it, that kind of thing. Um, that sound okay to go through? Okay, I'm. I'm just seeing a nod, so I'll go ahead with it. <laughs> um, okay, so um, there's there's been a couple things dropped in here um, around like what we want to do, but I, I want to say like like who that might be obvious, but I just want to go through that first and say like who like um, who are we going to do this for? Um, let me put in a heading here just for now. Okay, so who's the who do we think the target audience should be for a paper like this? Um, I know we talked about it being interesting for everybody, and then there was us two who volunteered to, to do this out. Um, I think there's the obvious thing of like platform engineering teams, um, but are there any other main audiences we want to consider here? So I think it's important that we also consider developers here because I believe like. Um, they they will be the one consuming and they can be the one pushing inside their their organizations or to platform engineers for supporting this kind of workloads because they find it valuable and useful. So I would like to also include that in the in the white paper. So is it accurate to put like basically the for developers, it's how those developers interact with the platform? With yeah, a, I would say with like how, how they consume and get the benefits from web wasm based uh workloads. Yeah, I, I think it's the intersection of the two personas. It's the GitOps uh, motion via the golden template, right? Um, that meets the developer platform um, on the IDP, right? So it's those two worlds that come together. So we now have the personas of an, I would say, existing platform. Um, how about uh, enterprise decision makers uh, who um, yeah, think about establishing something like an IDP?
Um, and we should also make sure we, I am assuming IDP was internal um, de Hello, deployment or development yeah. platform, right? But I want to make sure I'm trying to uh, make sure we define all upfront as we do it. So, um, okay. Yeah, that could be kind of the first term for the terminology section. <laughs> yeah. Um, the people put in chat, okay. Sure, I'm meeting chat up. Okay. So we want those enterprise decision makers. Um, so those will be like CTOs, directors, those kind of high yeah, level exactly. type things. Okay. Any other people we want to make sure we cover um or target audiences we want to hit here. I, I think for me personally, I feel like three is probably enough to not make the paper go totally out of control. But if there's someone who feels strongly, this is the time to maybe like put that out there. Okay. Perfect. Um, I think what we could think of, I'm sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> one, one additional thing. Um, what about the security audience? Like, um, I don't know, security architects or the, uh, this kind of folks. Does it make sense to add me as well? So I usually see them uh, somewhere between the uh, platform teams themselves because they are, uh, I would say, uh, establishing the governance and the enterprise decision makers who, I would say, are s somehow uh, setting the baseline for the governance. And um, the security people are hopefully happy that there is something that can enforce their governance rules. But I'm not that sure if they are... Uh, advocating for an IDP because th that could, um, yeah, um, set the rules. Um, yeah, my thinking too, like, I think we should touch on security points. I don't think it, for me, it would be a main audience per se. I like, because I, I think like the platform engineering teams worry about that security stuff. But and and we should address the benefits there because that is definitely one of the things about about WebAssembly. But I feel like an in depth like right there is a whole paper to be had. So like I feel like that's why I would probably keep it scoped to these ones right here. All right, makes sense. Okay. Um, okay, the what stuff is above. Um, I do want to talk about because uh, I think this will help us um, determine boundaries on how big we want this to be is when, when do we want this done? <laughs> like when, when do when do we want to have something to deliver when um that that kind of thing I, um I th I think I think and I'm not trying to be cheeky um uh if you've read the book um start with why um if you haven't it's a great book um just to read through but I think we should um consider starting with um the why on the paper you know the why wasm uh for IDP um and um but we should put in there, um, you know, we should explain and be honest about the shortcomings um, of containers um, for this purpose. You know, what's what's the friction um, and what's the vision for raising the subtraction? You know, this um, subtle tension between whenever you design a platform, you're negotiating what are the responsibilities of each application and what are the responsibilities of the platform? And what we're really trying to affect here is to raise the abstraction. You know, that I think is very helpful for us to set that, you know, what's the mountaintop that we really care about right at the beginning of the paper. Anybody, does that resonate with anyone? If not, we can just move on. Totally makes sense from my perspective, I mean, we, we should definitely state why. And that's what we've started up here, but we need to synthesize this into something. Um, yeah, something I, th I think it's also important be because it will help. Like, I think every of us that has been interacting with other developers or people in general that are not like in the WASA ecosystem, that's the first question that they ask. So having a resource in which you can just redirect or share could be really useful.
Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about that then. So we have some ideas up here. Um, there's this question around like, I would consider this like, how does Wasm support what we got now? People have devel developed IDPs on top of Kubernetes. How can people do it beyond like Kubernetes? Like what, what are the, the possibilities beyond it? Um, and then uh, open questions will influence some of this other stuff, not skipping it, just going here first. I, I kind of put in here of the like, we should probably review what was them. So like, what, um, what, what do people think? Like, actually here, I'm going to do this just because I put a structure. I don't care if we throw it all out, but like, what do people think about this structure? Like start poking holes in it. Um, like, do like, would this be the rough idea? Like, or um, the other thing, like we've, we've said like the who, do we, do we just want to, is the whole goal is just to convince people to use Wasm for platforms? Is that the goal or is there another goal? I guess I should just state that first because I think that's the goal. <laughs> but is, is that the, the thing here is influencing? Like, we think you should use Wasm for platforms in these things or whatever. Is that the goal? I, I I think that's that's an ambitious goal and an end goal, but I think um, uh, I think we should be honest with ourselves, and uh, an honest goal should be to raise awareness. You know, like oh, I did. Sorry, David, I wasn't even looking at the screen. I didn't see your hand up there. Uh, but I think we should really think about if we just think about are we raising awareness of the idea Wasm for IDP? That should be like goal number one. And then if we can also get some people to try this out. That would be cool. And then if actually people use it, like, yeah, that's the real dream. But I think primary goal number one is raise awareness. That's what we're trying to do here. Sorry. Didn't mean to cut in line, David. No worries. I'm just tapping away at the keyboard anyway. Uh, so I I think that's a, I, yes, it is ambitious to think that people are going to just like, uh, we're going to convince them to use WASM because of this. Uh, the I think, I think discussing the problems or discussing the the reasons why this stuff, what, why we want to approach this, like why are microservices a pain? Like how can we do this better? What what unique opportunities do we have to restructure the way we think about uh, platform engineering, building platforms, injecting code into uh, you know hot paths of applications, not just like using platform dependencies. But being able to inject yourself into platform dependencies, or or these these different ideas now that we have these new tools, what do the new new tools actually unlock? What kind of possibilities are there? Um, and I think if if we're raising the awareness of like, hey, you have whole new tools that you can take advantage of, um, that and and thinking about how those tools are structured, um, I think that's going to you know raise that awareness, hopefully get people excited. Maybe in the end, it leads to more usage of, of WebAssembly. Um, I don't know. Uh, does, does that make sense? Because I, I'm thinking about like IDPs, but I mean, going back, like my comment in the doc is, is about how do I even, how do I think about building software projects now? Do I think about building them differently? Um, do I think about those non-functional requirements that I had because I had, you know, uh, corporate division A working on microservice B that I needed to interact with? And the only reason why that was in microservice is not included within this, this application and packaged together was simply because uh, they had a different uh, deployment cycle than, than we had. And they move at a different speed uh, or they have different business requirements. Uh, these things don't necessarily have to be the same anymore. Like we we can we can change that now because of the technology changes. Sorry, I'll get off my soapbox. Uh Anhil, I saw you had your hand raised uh a little bit ago. Um right. yeah, I mean it was more more about to agree with uh with what you mentioned. Like I think that still today we have when we talk about WebAssembly, some people like have the idea in mind that this is a browser software. So just having that that mindset about this is going much farther than this is going to be valuable, and I think it's a it's a good goal for the for the document. I can't raise my hand apparently while I'm sharing, so uh, <laughs> the uh, the uh, let, let's just list this then. Like, what what problems do we think is is best solved for this, um, and what's the um, I I think that can help us 
like center around a goal. So like, like if we just label it, I'm just going to go into full like random mode, no structure. Um, the, like what, what are the problems we think that, that it really solves? So uh, Dave mentioned one that's really important. The idea of like these um, requirements now, like non-functional requirements, right. That's what we call them. Right. Like, so you have, um, um, And I'm, I'm assuming you're referring specifically to like component model, right? So like, instead of there being like this, yeah, okay. Okay. People just want to spit them out. So I think another important one is about efficient resource usage the platform that you are deploying or that you are using. I think that's also a pretty important thing. Ben, I've been talking a lot. Do you have some you want to throw in here too? Because I know you've probably been thinking about this. Well, Sven's thinking, David, you might as well. Awesome. Yeah. I second the efficient resource usage. You know, when we see more and more that you know, building these rich systems within Kubernetes, you end up building tons and tons of sidecars. And these sidecars take up a lot of memory and it, it, it gets onerous, right? Liam, you have your hand raised? Yeah, I mean, it's um, developers spend their time on operations and maintenance and not on innovation. Um, there is a, a Deloitte study um, that we can cite um, that um, that found that, that developers spent 80% of their time on operations and maintenance. Um, that's, I think, the that's the real um, bullet for me. I'm going to embellish Liam. If that's okay, because uh, from from my opinion, which I think is the same thing, um, I always say this is developers and SREs have to know each other's jobs rather than being able to like rely on the specialization. Um, they like developers have to know what their platform looks like and debug all these operational details. SREs, platform team people need to know everything that's running in the container and all the dependencies and all that kind of stuff um, that that I see. Is that a okay embellishment, Liam? If not, I'll separate it out. Uh, I think it's a separate point. I mean, I, I think the operation and maintenance is really just, you know, the the break fix loop, you know, the patch, um, you know, the uh, patching all the NFRs all the time. Um, the way that I phrase this, I mean, you guys, I, I, we all have been to each other's talks a hundred times. You guys have heard me say this um, before, uh, but I think the land, uh, the line that lands really well is the cost to free is very high. It's it's free to use, but it's not free to maintain, right? That that's I think the like the gut punch, um, you know, to point that out. And so when we copy that over and over again, Bailey put up that meme slide that was awesome. You know, do you want to have, um, you know, five thousand developers maintain one app, uh, one app, or one developer uh, maintain five thousand apps? You know, that's that's the sort of like flipping mindset between platform engineering here that we want to drive here to where, where is the work's going to be done? Do we going to do it one time in the platform or are we can do it 5,000 times in each app? That's the big idea, right? So I like your point, Taylor, but to come to restate your question, I think it's a separate, separate point. Angel, I, I think you uh, had your hand up next. Um, yep, uh, thank you. So yeah, I think this is something that it's related to different points. I think a little bit on the fourth point, like developers paying 80% of the time on non-functional requirements. But one thing that I think is really important is about reusability. So it, it provides you the ability to have just a centralized set of components that are pre-approved by the company. So developers don't need to make decisions in their projects every time over and over. 
they just can rely on main components that they can reuse across different ones. So everything is patched at the single time. I think that's that's also something that is important. Um, so, I think it's mixed with the others. So, um, yeah, um, so to state that as the problem, then on Hill, there's basically mm -hmm. a lack of reusability, and we can solve that with WebAssembly, correct? Exactly, okay. exactly. So, so it, it, I, and it's in many different levels. Like um, for some basic things, like libraries that you should reuse. If you have different teams working with different languages, each of them has their own set of dependencies. Then you have like companies, I know Microsoft, but I mean, I'm in VMware Broadcom. We have like huge pipelines about ensuring you lock in all the different like open source software that you use just to make sure that we control like CBs and all those kind of things. So if you have a centralized libraries that you can reuse on different parts that will like improve the, the way that all this thing is managed today. Um, by the way, also just to mention that there are also some comments on the on the chat about about proposals, so we don't miss. Uh, I I can read if you want, or uh, or you can. Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen them come up here too. We can. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, I forgot to actually I saw that part right down the migration. Um. Um, David, did you have something? I know you spoke, so I probably lowered your hand before Sven goes. Uh, I was uh, just going to mention that uh, Victor had a uh, talking bubble in there, and I was uh, either read it or uh, if they didn't feel like they wanted to. Uh, just many organizations still struggling with uh, migrating to container-based uh, technologies. Maybe help uh, helpful to understand how this transition to WebAssembly will be smooth and what the end state will be where virtualization, containers, and WebAssembly coexist and play their best roles. Um, I'm not sure what folks uh, what do folks think about that statement. I I, I don't mean feel... that I don't mean that uh, migration to container is uh, difficult. I mean. Uh, a lot of companies still struggling to see the benefit of migrating to like, Kubernetes. And then there are a lot of uh, open source projects built using containers technology, but not a lot of adoption actually in a lot of areas. Um, so um, now there's a new technology, Kubernetes, I mean, uh, WebAssembly. So uh, what will be the number one, of course, I understand the, the benefit of WebAssembly and what's the migration path. And of course, at, what's the end state? Because no matter what, there are some end state. For example, uh, I, I've been trying to find an answer about you know, what role virtualization plays compared with containers. And is the world going to be uh, like container only, right? My, my uh, finding is, uh, is actually no, virtualization will be there, uh, just like the public cloud provider is not going to rewrite it using container, right? So the reason is virtualization is, you know, better at resource management and, and uh, a lot of areas. So, so end state virtualization will play a role uh, no matter what. Uh, so what will be the end state when virtualization, container, and web they coexist? I think that will be an interesting topic. So from my side, definitely they will ever coexist. So that's, that's not a doubt for me. Uh, the question for me is, when I build a, pl a platform for my developers in-house, uh, will I um, expose them to all layers of visualization that are possible? Or will I target them, uh, or will I have, an, I would say, target architecture where they just can pick what they need and, uh, I would say, have the closest uh, uh, solution at hand? Um, so that would be more my goal to to just not uh, put the burden on choosing the technology on the developer. Um, just to answer that from my side, uh, if I'm s still allowed to to uh, uh, or um, Liam, do you have something for this point? Uh, no, please continue, Sven. Go go ahead. Okay, I, um, I have something to add, but you you go right ahead, bud. You you've got the floor. Oh, I, I would go to the next point. <laughs> Okay, so um, um, regarding the um, structure we are having uh, here, um, there is uh, in the sources the uh, link for the um, CNCF platforms uh, white paper. And uh, we are already uh, having points that fit perfectly into this, uh, the attributes of a platform. 
So there are this, described as uh, seven uh, attributes of a platform and something like uh, self-service, uh, reduction of cognitive load for users and operational and composable, uh, I would say the main points we could focus on. And uh, so when we thinking about we should, uh, or we try to um, apply what you can do with WebAssembly on the uh, platforms themselves, we could just um, collect the points and see how can we easily improve, for example, the reduction of cognitive load or uh, security by default with uh, WebAssembly technology. Um, yeah, um, what do you think? So it's up to discussion. I, I, I love the pulling in the seven platforms um, and say, you know, that would actually be a great starting point in the um, in the what uh, maybe section. Um, I think when we, um, Victor, to come to your question around um, the migration to any points around comparing containers, when containers, when VMs, uh, when WASM, I think that would be a separate paper that could come out of here. So I would suggest uh, maybe if we move that topic to a different list, I think the value of this paper will be in its focus um, in us staying on topic and being really appointed in our messaging and what we're trying to communicate here. And then Sven, uh, to maybe comment to your question around IDP, um, I've, um, I've had the pleasure or the pain of building a couple dozen IDPs in my career um, uh, for um, you know, uh, 15,000 to over a couple hundred thousand users um, in various roles. And we always found it helpful to um, to target them at, you know, as a single product. So Lambda doesn't, you know, let you access Firecracker, even though that's what it runs in. You know, you just have a single API. If you want to sell Firecracker, it's a separate, it's a separate product. All right, so I think I think that I we I would be curious if the platform engineering guide has any you know nomenclature on that um, all the way down um, would be maybe what I was uh, what I was thinking would it be curious about but I think that's probably more of an opinion than um, than a, than a rule. Okay. Um... Liam, did you raise your hand again or did it just not go down? Okay. Or, I'm sorry. I, I still don't have the ability to raise my hand except in real life, which how do you do that on a virtual call? And hands no work. Anyway, so the uh um th these are some good points here. What I really think I here's just in a proposal what we'd want to do. I don't want to bog everybody down. There's a reason we try to delegate this out in doing like every single piece of this paper. Um, I feel like it might be really good to have the idea of what what problems do we want to talk about addressing? And then Sven and I can um, uh, maybe schedule some time for us two to get together and then like start like, okay, well, using this to address these like seven attributes of a platform, you know, like we can come up with like a kind of overall structure and send it to everybody for like, yeah, do that. And then we can go from there. Does that sound like a good plan forward? Or do, I, I'm just trying to say this so we're not, I don't want to just keep people here for like a whole hour, just like, you know, hammering on this because there's a reason we try to delegate um thoughts on on doing that and if so if there is there anything missing from from points we want to talk here Um, yeah, I think I, I agree with all these. If the, if the only other one I've really been thinking of down this, what else do we need to cover is like, how do people actually use the stuff that exists to deploy to production? Like what, what does that look like? Um,
Sven, do you, are you okay with that plan to kind of like you and I can get together and then kind of go down this list? Okay. Is it, are there, ah, uh, love the Mac. I can do this and get the, the laser. Yeah. Anyway, but I have the background, so it doesn't look as good. Um, <laughs> all of us engineers are a bunch of squirrels when it comes to features like this. Um, okay. Anyway, um, any other comments here before we pass it back to to uh, David for stuff? Are, are people good with the plan? Any other concerns, questions, comments? I love silence. It means I bored people to death or... Or they all agree. Nothing in between. Super aligned here. Super aligned, everyone. <laughs> okay. Anyway, there you go, David. That's all I had for, for that. Um, thanks to everyone who helped out, particularly uh, Sven and Angel, I know, put in some thinking and effort here and talking about it. So, um, And then thanks to everyone else who dropped in ideas. Taylor, thanks for driving this. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think... Yeah, just just one latest comment. Um, it it could be nice to continue trying to do like in a also in a same way in the document. So really happy to participate in that way also, just to avoid like because I know sometimes dropping so many people in the in the in the document working together just stops like making progress. So once you have flat light down all those lists into something that more concrete, happy to continue working on the document. So uh, still, don't be afraid to put things in there. So I'm more than happy to uh, just collect the things that doesn't fit in and uh, uh, keep it for the next uh, white paper. So uh, all good. That brings up a really great idea. Like, what is that next white paper? Um, <clears throat> I I'm a little biased. Um, I'll throw an idea forward and see if folks are interested in pursuing this. Um, but I think the the blending between uh, OCI, um, running container workloads that contain WebAssembly, um, and starting and formalizing uh, the integration between container runtimes and OCI image formats. Um, I don't know if that's interesting to folks. I, I can raise my hand, but I didn't see any here. Let me raise it. So I'm officially, there we go. I raised my hand. I have the button back, everybody. Um, so um, the, the thing I would say, I would actually wonder if it's a better thing to talk about it along term, like, because some of those details feel like they actually belong in this white paper that we've just been talking about. And some of them, I feel like they belong more in like, what's the developer gonna do? Because with any technology, like here, I'll phrase it like what the, the reason I see with that is it's very unbounded and sure to be biased by the people in this room. And so what that, what that now there's always gonna be, I'm not saying there's an entire way to avoid bias because that's how just people work. But what I, like if I were to phrase it another way, like what if I said, what are the different ways we can all integrate with virtualization? Well, there's a crap ton, right? Like I can talk about Vagrant, like all the good old Vagrant stuff, right? I can talk about like things like Firecracker. I can talk about things. And so like, there's a million integration points. And so trying to say like, this is the way to integrate containers with Wasm feels like it, it ends up towards like, here's the one or, or just kind of enumerated list that then we'll have to keep updating as people come up with ideas. And so I'd rather think of it as a term of like, how does it integrate into the platform like that? Um, we had that question that we put in like is the problem like how does wasm coexist with containers um and then also like how the developers are going to interact with it so i think there's there's the two sides there and if so my that's why i'm i'm wondering if it is better to fold that idea into a larger idea so that it doesn't become something where it's just an ever updating list of things or ways you could integrate with containers um that that's kind of my thinking behind it. I don't know what other people think here. Liam, you have your hand raised. Okay. I was going to suggest uh, actually different paper, uh, but it sounds like we're on topic here. I was going to suggest that we do the why wasm or when wasm, you know, containers, wasm, virtual machine. That seems like, I, I think there's a Maslow's order of needs here. Um, uh, and that feels to be a very common question that, that I get asked a lot is when, would I use web assembly, when do I use containers? I 
I mean, David, to add to add on your idea, um, I mean, what what I what I find personally very interesting is like the the um, different operating model and that like um, also like observability model and things that can go wrong with this kind of uh, way because like in the end it it still um, kind of uh, shifts the way how you how you are currently working with Kubernetes in a way. So like the API is still the same, but you still have to um, somehow work with your, with your um, with your Wasm runtime. And I mean, there is still this runtime and all the things that do not yet quite work. So I, th I think there there's like a whole area that, that needs to be investigated and um, needs to be uh, considered like how we will work with this in future. And yeah, it's like again, specifically on the container Kubernetes realm, um, as opposed to what Taylor just um, um, suggested. But I think there's like a shitload of stuff that we can could investigate on. So hey, guys, with the raising hand. <laughs> yeah. I know I got it. It's so exciting still. Um, <laughs> so uh, I was just looking back at, I, I pulled up our deliverables and scope that's in the, the tag runtime thing. And I'm wondering if maybe some of these things would be best done as like, we called it in the thing, the vertical use cases or like example architectures and demos. Um, it might even be good to show like, just because Kubernetes is the, the touchstone, it's the thing that everybody knows. Like here are three different ways you can run Wasm integrated with Kubernetes, right? Like I mentioned how Cosmotic, we have a controller. When's the advantage? How, like, why, like, why is that useful? You, Microsoft's been working on RunWASI. When does RunWASI work? When is RunWASI useful? Um, I think it maybe like is a good like place to, instead of it being a paper, be something like, here's some examples of how like end to end, here's how you get started with it. Here's how you like integrate. What are the challenges you're going to run into if you're trying to do this in, in production um, or like the, the types of things you'll have to, to be aware of. And then this is what it looks like. It doesn't even have to be like the, the, the idea isn't as much the app you're demoing at the end. It's just proof that what you did worked. Like, so it's not about the end app demo. So that way we're not having to worry about like, we don't have to worry about like people crying foul because like they're not in this call or whatever. We, I want like, it's just more like, hey, like here's here's some ways we thought of, like people can do any of these ways and here's how you do it. Um, and having that, that kind of step-by-step -step demo ish type of thing might be a more useful exercise for people, especially for those we're trying to um, convince of the importance of, of WebAssembly and that we, there's there's things here that they can use. So it sounds like uh, there is definite interest for when WASM, when containers, um, when 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 would I choose one or the other? Um, so I. I, yeah, it makes sense. Let's start telling the broader story. Then we can start, you know, maybe slicing it up. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, Victor, you have your head raised? Yeah, I was coming. Yeah, I, I also like the uh, Liam's uh, when WASM topic. Uh, then, because at this point, the WASM already show very promising using the edge computing IoT area. So for the server side computing may not be there yet, but maybe there will be a, like a, a kind of a one wasm 2023 or 2024, just to what's the current state. So this will be uh, going forward will be uh, you know more updated when you know wasm shows more promising in the in the data center as well. Excellent. Um, would anybody be interested in leading this uh, paper? Or would we like to approach it in the new year? I'd love to approach it in the new year because, I mean, I'm interested <laughs> in helping either way, but also gestures at white paper that were, we started. Um, so, yes, I wasn't sure if there were others that were interested in driving, uh, you know, a white paper. Um, Let's, how about we do one, we do one well, we figure out what worked, what didn't work, and then we'll try out the second. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that approach just to, because I, at least for me personally, this is my first working group in the CNCF. So I'm not sure about the deadlines, the four involved into a white paper, but just to make sure that um, when, when we decide to work on one, we have like, we invest the time that we need to make it uh, properly. Um, that I'm, I'm, I think we already talked about because I, I, another topic that I think could be interesting is about security around and how you can leverage tools. So yeah, I think that those are kind of ideas that can be follow-ups on, on them. And I like also the way in which we can connect different white papers. So you have one, which is the base, and then with the second, then you can start crossing things together. Awesome. Uh, I believe we are at the end of our agenda. So, um, well, I had the one I, I PSA? yeah, it was more of a, it's kind of, I just want people to think about it. So now that um, I'm pretty sure this was announced last week when I wasn't here, but yeah, we're, we are at WASI preview two. Therefore um, the next work begins. Um, and one of the big things uh, that David also knows about, because I know he's involved here um, is the stuff around WASI cloud, which I've, I call like the, I think the fairest explanation is the 80% contracts, right? Like if you're going to hit the 80% use case, these are the basic ones. So blob store, um, key value, uh, those kind of, those kind of pieces of the, of the thing. So um, all of these are found under like their different names inside of the, I believe it's, um, let's see, WASI. Uh, yeah. It's under the web assembly org. So you have like WASI key value, um, I'll actually send like this link as an example, but you can you can find all of them pretty much with a Google search. I wish there wasn't like a meta repo that explained all the ones that are in there. There's not, we'll figure that out, but I will drop the link in here just to like, you know, what the format looks like. So you can go like Wazi Blob Store, Wazi this. And so we're starting to have quite a bit of work from people in the community, myself, David, um, Joe, who works with who works with David, like a bunch of people in the community who are all participating here. And so I just wanted to get it on people's radar because we're in that lull time for you to go like dig around, poke around, offer feedback, come up with ideas, because these are going to be the next things that are getting settled on. And if there's something that the cloud native WASM working group should have an opinion on, it's probably WASI cloud. So I just wanted to, um, oh yeah, there we go. Thanks, David. I knew there was something somewhere. Um, so the... Um, ju just point that out. Um, I'd also like call out, I, I am looking for feedback on one in particular that I just opened up. Um, I'm going to link that. Um, there we go. Uh, here. So, um, I'm curious, especially cause like there's a bunch of people on this call who would, who would have opinions here, like. One in particular, I think of Zon Hill with um, Wasm Worker Server, um, the idea of whether or not we need a standard config contract. This is different than the environment variables because there's going to be, um, at least I believe so, and please tell me if you think I'm wrong, um, there's going to be plenty of times when people don't have access to or don't want to grant access to things from Wasi CLI, um, which is a pretty broad contract, like pretty broad interface to be able to give environment variables. There's security considerations and other things. And so this is thinking of like the minimum viable way that any WebAssembly component can then, like if it runs in Wasm Cloud, then it can go run in, in Wasm Worker Server. It can go run in um, Kubernetes with, with a run Wasi shim, like whatever it might be like that, that key thing is there. Um, and so I'm just curious if people like the idea. And if you do, and you're gonna use, I would appreciate any comments on there. Um, but please go do this with all of them. I'm just doing this in particular because I've been working through it. And I was like, I think this is something that's needed, but I want to validate this with people in this space in particular. But like go through and see like, does the key value work? Is it going to be too complex? Is it going to do the things I need it to do? And so, like I said, mostly a PSA um, here just for, for people to take a look over, a look at that because it's going to be four weeks until we meet again. It's going to be January. Um, and then start offering any any commentaries. And if there's concerns or discussions we want to have, please like drop that in the Slack channel. I'd love to even talk about those. We just kind of want to talk about them ad hoc. And like, I'm like, it, even if it's something, I'm not sure I feel comfortable with this because X, Y, Z, but you're not ready. You're, it's not fully formed. You don't want to drop it in a PR yet. Like we can talk about it there and, and come up with ideas together. So um, that's my PSA. Please go take a look. Um, this is something we should definitely have an opinion on. And if there's something that we disagree with, especially as a group, we need to make sure as a group, we let that be known through a PR or whatever we need to do to say, like, we think it should be this. 
like based on the meeting of the minds of the people who are here, like that's, this is what we think it should be and why, um, because that opinion will hold weight. So just wanted to call that out. I'm, I'm completely well willing to act as the liaison here and type up anything or any like stuff we come up with David also, because David's the champion on a lot of these. Um, so like any of these, just start looking at them. That's, that's the announcement. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you for thank you for sharing it. Um, yet just one comment on the on the WhatsApp worker server side. Um, we are we currently started like posting th some of the forces that we were working on because we want to concentrate on moving to a proper support for components. We started doing it in November, but the idea is that we will be starting embracing things like WASI Cloud Core. So yeah, you can expect more more activity around that topic. It's going to be the next thing that we want to implement on on WASM worker server. So yeah, definitively we'll take a look for sure. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I brought it up. I think I feel like a lot of people here are working on projects where they're going to want to know know about that. And like the time it there's been plenty of things in the past where I felt like I didn't get enough notice. I'm trying to make it as clear as possible to everyone. Like now is the time, next month or two. So um don't miss the boat if you want to make sure you comment on these things and, and we get the, the proper use cases covered. Because I really desperately want this. My my personal goal. And what I'm hoping is like, what it seems to be a lot of people's goals, when we get to KubeCon EU, we're all able to demonstrate, and I think probably a lot of us are going to go to Wasmio, which is right before KubeCon. Um, I want to be able to have something where it can run on any of our things, any of the stuff we're all working on, same component. I desperately want to show that off um, because I think it's a game changer and it, that's the kind of aha moment. It's not going to be a killer app. I'm, I'm on my soapbox now. Sorry. Uh, like... It's it's definitely not the um, it's not going to be the killer app like everybody talks about. It's going to be the killer use case, and this is one of those killer use cases where people start to get it. They start to go, "Oh, I just saw this thing run across things running in Kubernetes outside of Kubernetes, alongside Kubernetes, um, in containers, not in containers, and it's the same piece of code. Um, and it's even better if we can do a composition of it. Like I wrote this thing in Rust and I wrote this thing in Go and now they're working together in all these systems. Like that's the kind of demos and things I want to be able to show people um, because that last soapbox comment, that's the last, like we, we all are going to have like competing ideas and things and that's great. But like right now, let's like get that awesome experience in and then we can go compete and have fun that way. But like, I want to make sure we have that that experience nailed for people because um, that's that's the game changer right there. That's the stuff we've been mentioning in the white paper. That's the stuff we've been met, like, that's the game changer. So anyway, I will step off my soapbox now um, and pass it back. But anyway, sorry for the uh, sorry for the random soapbox there at the end. No, that's the excitement. That's the dream. That's where we're going to get to. And hopefully it doesn't take us having to put a, a version string that's 25 characters long that's aligned to five different builds of six different tools. Um, that would be sad. But we'll get there. We will get there. And let's keep focusing on that dev experience and making this ecosystem uh, more palatable, uh, easier to use. Awesome. Uh, any any final thoughts? Uh, anybody have anything that they would like to cover before we adjourn for the year? Uh, voting still open for um, uh, Bytecode Alliance. Uh, the Bytecode Alliance community stream will be happening on December 26th, which will make it 12 monthly community streams uh, for the year. So not a single miss um, uh, for the entire year. Huge props to Bailey, um, even uh, when it fell on Halloween and the day after Christmas. The Grinch may have stolen all the presidents, presents, but did not steal the Bytecode Alliance community stream. Tune in to see if Bailey will show up wearing a Grinch outfit. I know I'll be there. You should be there as well. Or just catch it on the live stream later. Um, uh. We're so close to announcing um, uh, the Plumbers uh, event for uh, the Bytecode Alliance um, uh, in January. We're going to get that out uh, shortly, um, uh, and then uh, uh, and then WasmCon um, is may to be posted. If it's not, the WasmCon is on um, as well. So if it's not posted, it should be posted shortly uh, for twenty twenty four.
So another great year of WebAssembly events. Uh, and we should finish reviewing WASM Day papers for WASM EU. I think we're supposed to finish in the next two days. And we ended up with a little over 40 submissions. So um, it should be, and we have, so we have I, I tell you what, it may be all customers on stage. We may not have a single vendor. None of us may be on stage, which would make my day to not have to see any of us again, except for probably, I don't know, like Bailey. We probably have to put, put her up because she's always pretty amazing. But other than that, the, the, like none of us, none of, none of us like Wasm vendors. That would be awesome. Like if it's just people who are like actual customers, that would be that would make my day. But we'll see. It's you know, it's all it's all it's all voting. So it's happening now. I mean, a great indication of a uh, community health. There, I mean, there's stuff that's like shown up that's blown my mind. Like just really cool, like really cool customers doing really cool things. Super exciting. Excellent. Uh, yes, that would be superb. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. We got about two minutes left. Uh, everybody have a fantastic day and go out there and change the world a little bit. All right. Happy holidays and happy new year. See happy you all holidays. on the other side. Uh, happy holidays. Bye happy everybody. Holidays, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye.